This is the Zhishkov district in Prague, Czech Republic, captured in 1917. The district boasts beautiful mid-rise housing with retail spaces on the ground floor. However, after the coup in 1948, the communist government supposedly aimed to create a worker's paradise and introduced the concept of siedliště, a Czech term for housing districts associated with Soviet-style apartment blocks. While these housing districts can be viable solutions for providing homes for millions of people, in the 70s, planners wanted to turn the whole Zhishkov district into a massive siedliště. The plan involved destroying the old, charming architecture to make way for new apartment blocks. Fortunately, the November 1989 revolution put a stop to this plan, but only after a section of old Zhishkov had been demolished. In this video, we'll delve into the proposed plan to destroy Zhishkov and explore the impact it would have had on the rest of Prague. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing, it's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. The first mention of the land that consists of Zhishkov today comes from the year 1358, when the famous Czech king and Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV decreed that the areas around Prague should be turned into vineyards. These outer areas included the lands that are today known as Zhishkov. The few inhabitants continued to peacefully make wine until 1420, when the Battle of Vítkov took place. Alright, time for a quick history lesson, that's right, you're getting an education here. The Battle of Vítkov was a part of the Hussite Wars, in which the Catholic forces of Europe clashed with the Hussites, the supporters of Jan Hus. Jan Hus was a priest and massive critic of the Catholic establishment. One thing he was specifically against was the sale of indulgences, which were basically get-out-of-hell free cards sold by the church to the people, supposedly to free them from their sins. The church, to put it lightly, really didn't like him, and for his supposed heresy, he was burnt at the stake in 1415. Just a few years later, in 1419, a mob descended onto the new town city hall in Prague and threw the council members out of the building's windows. This act was later coined the first defenestration of Prague. Yes, the first, we Czechs have a little tradition of robbing people out of windows. This event is regarded as the start of the Hussite Wars. Now, let's get back to the Battle of Vítkov. Vítkov is a hill in today's Zhishkov district of Prague. The Catholics were trying to conquer Prague by encircling the city. If they wanted to completely surround the city, they had to take the hill. The Hussites, with their famous general Jan Zhishka, successfully defended the hill and ultimately broke the siege on Prague. Zhishka's name was later the inspiration for naming the district Zhishkov, and the war at large was the inspiration for many street names in the district, like Husitska, named after the Hussites, Husinetska, named after Husinets, the town Jan Hus was born in, or Kostnitska Namiesti, named after the Czech translation of the town of Konstanz in modern-day Germany, where Jan Hus was burned at the stake. The next major development came in 1788, when the town of Vinichna Hory was created. This town was renamed to Kralovské Vinohrady in 1867, and finally, in 1877, the place we know today as Zhishkov was created. In 1881, Zhishkov was promoted to a town, and in 1922, the town was incorporated into the city of Prague. Zhishkov was also important in the May 1945 Prague uprising. The district saw extremely heavy fighting on improvised barricades. A middle school building, used as barracks for SA troops, was used by the soldiers stationed there to take hostages, some of which were executed. Eventually, help came in the form of the Soviet Prague Offensive, Germany surrendered, and all that was left was a war-torn city. In 1946, elections were held to determine who would lead the nation. The Communist Party won with 40% of the vote. Unfortunately, this was the last democratic election held in Czechoslovakia until 1990. In 1947, the Czechoslovak government, pressured by Moscow, rejected taking part in the Marshall Plan. Democracy in the country officially died in February 1948, when the communists took power through a coup d'état. Immediately, they started enacting their vision for a supposed workers' utopia. One part of this vision was building paneláky, prefabricated apartment buildings built out of concrete panels. Paneláky are a common sight across the Czech Republic and the whole former Eastern Bloc. These buildings were concentrated into Siedliště, which is the name for housing districts, complete with apartment blocks, shops, schools and other amenities within walking distance or a short public transit trip. This concept of small little cities contained within larger cities was originally created in the Soviet Union under the name Mikrorayon or Micro District. City Beautiful made a great video on this topic, link is in the description. 
Now that you've received your PhD in Czech history, let's get into the main topic of this video. In 1971, new underground cables were built to the Central Telecommunications Building, causing several houses in the district to collapse. This provided an excuse to ban any maintenance work on buildings in the whole district. That meant that the developments there slowly fell into disrepair. The regime used this as an excuse for wanting to rebuild Jishkov. No, pochopitelně, že je to lepší, když se člověk přestěhuje ze čtvrtý kategorie do první. No, nehledě k tomu, že tam byly všelijaké poruchy, závady, že jo, poněvadž různé zařízení byly společné pro nás, pro všechny. No a tak to mělo své nevýhody. In 1973, the government approved the reconstruction plan for the district. The charming apartment buildings would be demolished to make room for paneláky. The unique district would be transformed into just another sídliště, like Jižní město, Chodov or Rostyle. The rebuilding of the district was planned in three stages. Four years later, in 1977, the first stage began, the first buildings were demolished and paneláky were built in their place. This stage, which included reconstructing the buildings around Olšanské and Komenského squares, was completed in 1984. The unfortunate inhabitants of the buildings that were demolished were forcefully evicted and moved to the Jižní město sídliště. My family unfortunately didn't avoid this fate. Though my grandparents didn't live in the district, they lived in a building similar to the ones in Jishkov, which was blown up to make way for the government's construction projects. And like thousands of other citizens of Prague, they were evicted to Jižní město. The next stages were thankfully never completed due to the Velvet Revolution happening in November 1989. The project was cancelled soon after. The reconstruction of parts of the Zhishkov district created a stark contrast between the new Panelag developments and the old houses. In my opinion, the older developments have a sort of timeless charm. They are pleasant to look at and they provide just as much, if not more density than Soviet-era concrete blocks. To be fair, I would much rather live in a Panelag than be homeless, but destroying this timeless architecture to build sterile concrete blocks is just not the way. Today, the city has a different problem. Not enough housing is being built due to the overly strict bureaucracy, housing being developed for profit and not to provide housing, among other things. For this reason, let me defend Soviet-style housing policy for a moment. I absolutely do not support forcefully evicting people and blowing up their homes to build stuff, but I do support housing built not for profit, but to provide housing to people who actually need it. Sídliště may not be the most visually appealing solution there is, but they successfully provided housing for millions of people. Imagine if we built new non-profit developments with actually modern and visually appealing architecture on the scale that the previous regime did. I believe that for the most part, excluding the forced evictions, the communist housing policy is the only good thing that they brought to this country. In conclusion, I think that the destruction of part of Zhishkov's historic architecture was a terrible idea that thankfully wasn't fully realized. We definitely need to build more housing though, but we need to take the local population into consideration. And it definitely wouldn't hurt to make the buildings more visually appealing than sterile concrete blocks. Thank you for watching to the end, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next week, bye!